question is, if you died today, what dreams, what ideas, what leadership, what books, what gifts will die with you? Let me tell you something you already know. The world ain't all sunshine and rainbows. It's a very mean and nasty place, and I don't care how tough you are, it will beat you to your knees and keep you there permanently if you let it. But every time that happens, you get back on your feet. You get up just as fast as you can, no matter how many times you need to do it. Remember this. Success has been and continues to be defined as getting up one more time than you've been knocked down. And I'm telling you, you're not where you want to be financially and it's not going to take 20 shots. You're not where you want to be in your marriage and it's not going to take 20 shots. You're not where you want to be in your personal life. You are not the person you want to be and it's not going to take you 20 shots. For some of you, it's one more shot. For some of you, it's two more shots. And you have not given yourself enough credit to say, I just need to get up a half hour earlier and my whole life will change. I just need to get up one hour early. I just need to work one hour longer. You, for whatever reason, you never pursued those dreams. You never acted on those ideas. You never used those gifts. And there they are standing around your bed, looking at you with large, angry eyes, saying, we came to you. And only you could have given us life. And now, we must die with you forever. I will not go down that way. I choose to fight back! I choose to rise, not fall! I choose to live, not die! And I know, I know that what's within me is also within you! I need to stop hitting that snooze button. If you were to make that one change, that one sacrifice, you would stop dreaming and start living it. I say, are you a dreamer? I say, are you a dreamer? It's very, very important that you understand the things that I'm sharing with you today. I feel like I'm a man on a mission. I feel like God sent me to you for a reason. I am pregnant to deliver this word. Every time I get this word out, I feel a little bit better. Somebody needs this word. Somebody's life is going to be changed today. Somebody's on the verge of going to another level. You've been held up and held back and hindered by people who didn't understand where you were coming from because they didn't see it and they didn't perceive it and they didn't understand it. But God is getting ready to do something new and something fresh and something significant in your life oh do you hear what i'm saying if you're going to be effective number one you must identify the source of your dream you must identify the source of your dream where did your dream come from this is very important that you understand it because some of us have inherited dreams from, from parents and, 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 and mentors and people who wanted to influence us and people who wanted to live vicariously through you. So they start pointing you toward what they think you ought to do. And, and, and if your dream is born through somebody else's desire, you could be destroyed trying to fulfill it. People always wanted a doctor in their family, and they always wanted a dentist in their family, and they always wanted a lawyer in their family, and so they decide they're going to steer you in that direction, and you're miserable trying to be something for which God didn't really call you to do, and you weren't created to do it, and you're frustrated trying to do something that's really not you. Somebody who wants grandkids before they die, and so you go out and marry somebody and get pregnant so mama can see her grandkids, and you end up miserable for 30 years to fulfill somebody else's dream of being. Oh, grandma says you got a preacher's head, and everybody's start sending you to Bible college and you end up preaching for 20 years but you're miserable and out of place because you really haven't fulfilled your dream you've received the dream from other people domineering overbearing manipulative people who speak into your life and control you domineering husbands domineering wives manipulative people who try to make you be happy to be something that they want you to be and you're living out somebody else's dream and as long as you're living out somebody else's dream you are a prisoner a slave to their imagination locked up to the prison of their idea chained to their opinion and you'll never be free you might be rich you might be famous you might get the house on the hill but you'll always be miserable until you find out 
God, why am I here? What did you create me to do? What? Oh. You must identify the source of your dream. When you're identifying the source of your dream, you got to rule out dreams that are born out of brokenness. Dreams that are born out of bad beginnings. You're trying to prove something to your first husband. You're trying to show your first boyfriend that you can live without him. You're trying to show your sister that you made it without her support. You're trying to prove something to the neighbors across the street. You've been through abuse and you're trying to get even with life for something that it took you through. All these things are dreams that are not good dreams. They, they're nightmares. They, they end in agony and despair because they were not born correctly. These dreams are born out of the flesh. They're born out of fleshly issues and problems that take hold in your life and they're born because you're trying to prove something to somebody who may not ever change their mind in the first place you cannot allow somebody's opinion to become your idol can you handle this you got to rule out dreams that are born out of your own fleshly desire to be seen to be heard to be recognized to be different to be impressive to be accepted Oh, it's getting tight now. This requires deep honesty. I mean, you might spend a year or two just going through this first point. Because it really takes some nerve to look yourself in the, in the face and say, why am I doing this? And I mean, really be honest. Strip off all the little scriptures you wrapped around what you wanted to do and take a good naked look at why are you really doing this. If you don't get the nerve to ask yourself the tough question about where your dream came from, you're going to end up in a nightmare. Like Sarah who ends up with an Ishmael by a woman that she later has to put out of her house because the whole thing was born out of the flesh. And God told Abraham, he said, I'm going to bless you, but I'm not going to bless you through anything that was born out of your flesh, born out of your pride, born out of your strife, born out of your need to be recognized. And some people need to understand that your life has been put on hold for years. The enemy couldn't stop you from going forward, but he let you have an Ishmael because he comes for three things. He comes to steal, to kill, and destroy. And if he can't destroy you, he'll try to steal your life away from you, getting you to spend your life trying to do something that is not going to be profitable. And the worst kind of servant you can be in the house of God is an unprofitable servant. Profit is what you have left when the transaction is over. You got to write fast because I'm loaded today, baby. Profit is what you have left when the transaction is over and when you start seeing years pass by and you don't have anything to profit, you've got to get the nerve to look at your dream and say, why am I doing what I'm doing? And ask yourself the tough questions so that you don't try to get the promise through an Ishmael. I'm not talking about what you say. You know how to say the right stuff. I'm talking about what you believe about yourself. You say the right things. You've been taught how to imitate faith. You talk, as my grandmother said, you talk at the big game. But you go home and live out your belief. If you believe you are unlovable, you didn't believe you were dumb till you heard you were dumb. You didn't believe you couldn't learn till you heard somebody say you couldn't learn. You didn't believe you were unattractive till you heard somebody say. Every time you hit a low place, don't those voices come back up again? Every time things go wrong, don't those voices come back? You have never changed your belief. You can 
dress up, you can smell good, you can work out, you can say all the right things, you can walk around, you can be definite, you can be cool, you can be hip, but none of that will overcome that belief that you have in your heart that your life is over, that you made too many mistakes that you're too old to get anything done in the kingdom. These things that you believe have become your vision state. It is your purpose. And unknowingly it has become your goal to live out the damnation of the words you rehearse to yourself. So you're busy trying to get everybody else to like something that you don't like. You're trying to convince everybody else that you are something that you don't believe. You can't get enough people to tell you you're pretty when you think you're up. That's why you keep needing some more.